side is counting on, what they're counting on is you're going to stay home. They're counting on your silence. They're counting on your amnesia. They're counting on your apathy. They're counting on young people staying home and union members staying home and black folks staying home. Well, President Obama, the post-racial president, accused of playing the race card there during a campaign stop in Philadelphia. Some say it smacked of desperation as the president ramps up his attacks on specific Americans in advance of the midterms. First, you remember, uh, he blamed Rush Limbaugh. Then he targeted President Bush. Then he targeted House Minority Leader John Boehner. Now it is Karl Rove and Ed Gillespie and the Chamber of Commerce, all named specifically. Karl Rove firing back this morning on Fox & Friends. Carl, they need a boogeyman. They had Bush. That didn't work. They had Boehner. Now it's you. It's you for this week. Hey, it ain't going to work. It, who's right the now? genius inside the White House who said, you know what, we can win the election by using Carl Rove's name. I mean, <laughs> I want to meet that idiot. I mean, who is that? Well, syndicated radio talk show hosts Leslie Marshall and Lars Larson are my guests now. So uh, let, me, let me start with you on this, Lars. You know, they, they, they use the term boogeyman there because it did start, yeah. you remember the president with Rush Limbaugh and then uh, yep. taking aim at obviously President Bush, which is fair game, right? But the people have said he's blamed him for too many things. John Boehner, the House Minority Leader, even uh, targeting Fox News, uh, many of the White House supporters targeting the Tea Party. And now finally, three weeks in advance of the election, we seem to have settled on Karl Rove and Ed Gillespie, Gillespie and the Chamber of Commerce as the boogeyman, if you will, uh, in connection with this race. Does that resonate? Uh, no, of course it's not going to resonate. The American people have figured this thing out. The president has run out of people to blame, and I, was, I thought you were going to throw Fox News in there. He's blamed your entire network for causing the demise, I guess, of American prosperity. The president ought to wise up and understand that even his supporters uh, are standing up and telling him that they know that he is the one who's failing in this case, and he can't blame his failure on the other guys any longer. And, by the way, the fact that he's starting to play the race card even just a little bit, I think that's his inner Reverend Wright starting to emerge after all those sermons that he slept through for 20 years. If he gets, if he starts to play this game again, the way he did with a Cambridge cop, uh, Americans are not going to appreciate it. Leslie, what about it? He says, look, the, the Republicans are planning, they're counting on young people, union members, and black folks staying at home in this election. Now, those are groups that tend to vote Democratic. So, I mean, obviously, he's got mm -hmm. a point in terms of the actual vote. But is that, is that race baiting? Is it incendiary? Is it something a president should avoid doing? Uh, no, I think, honestly, last week we were talking about, all over the media, uh, we were talking about polls that specifically targeted voters based on race. And we talked about the African-American voter in America that and their 91 support. 91% and, 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 support. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I think for the president to respond to that, because there are those on the right that are saying, look, the youth isn't going to vote. Well, you don't have the numbers. Uh, you know, the black folks are going to stay home. So I think the president was just responding to the uh, not only the attacks by the, the right, but uh, the poll numbers as well. So that speak, we have but then speak to the, the other charge, because, you know, sort of an overall theme of an accusation of desperation by the White House. You know, like the, the black folks, you know, the Republicans don't want you. Young folks, the Republicans don't want you. Oh, and by the way, Karl Rove and Ed Gillespie and the Chamber of commerce they're evil you know that that, that this is this is the narrative coming out of the president's mouth three weeks in advance of the elections Leslie this is politics, Megan, and I have con I still hear no. Bill Clinton being blamed for our economy today in 2010 uh, by those Not on just the him, right. Jimmy it Carter. is very typical. <laughs> it is very it is very typical for those on the right to blame the left and those on the left to blame the right. What the president is trying to show is that look, it's not all his fault. It's not all liberal Democrats' fault, and he's just throwing some of the mud back across the aisle. Unfortunately, it is effective. Polls do show that's effective. Lars, he was doing that. I mean, he was blaming President Bush for the economy, and sure. he spoke to a John Boehner, who's obviously the he's House Minority Leader. But but the the attacks recently have shifted. It's not he's not saying Karl Rove or the Chamber of Commerce are to blame for the for the economy. He's saying he's staying away from the economy now. He's saying these guys are pumping money into these elections, and it's essentially unfair. We deserve to know who's behind every dollar. Which is crazy coming from a guy who spent hundreds of millions of dollars to get elected. And by the way, questioning where the money's coming from, you notice that last night the president dropped his accusations against the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. He's left them out of his speeches in the last 24-hour news cycle. This is the guy who had to turn back money that came from Hamas members to his campaign. And he said he sent back virtually all of it. 
for him to be making these accusations is just wrong. But, and to suggest that somehow the Republicans are wrong because of the source of their money, baloney. What of that, Leslie? Because the president, maybe the president didn't mention the last 24 hours, but the vice president did, specifically uh -huh. su suggesting that the, that the Chamber of Commerce is using foreign funds to pay for uh, election ads, which is a crime which is a crime. In a criminal courtroom, you have to have at least probable cause uh, to, to make such an allegation. And, and yet they just throw it at the vice president of the United States, throws it out there, and asks the chamber to come forward and, and prove it's wrong. The chamber has said that it's absolutely wrong. The New York Times has said that. Factcheck.org has said it's absolutely wrong. What are your takes on it? As a Democrat, do you think this is right? Well, first of all, Megan, I'm not kissing your butt. Great interview with the vice president of the Chamber of <laughs> Commerce earlier. And one Thank of the you. things that you asked as an attorney is, okay, look, you know, people are saying, show the proof. And here, here's the problem, in my opinion. If these allegations are false, where is the lawsuit? I mean, with the litigiousness of our country, we don't see what? that. Yes, they don't have the responsibility you have to, file to say a who the donors to prove are. It's not true? But if they no, what I'm saying, if, if somebody's going to make false accusations about me, I might consider suing them because they're wrong. Although I do put a lot of credit and merit in fact check, how can you check the facts when you don't have the list of who the donors are? Leslie, we know that over you... at least over a hundred thousand dollars from hundred and fifteen foreign based companies do give money to the chamber. But that doesn't, how do you but know that, that money specifically doesn't go into But ads. how do you know that the money that goes to the unions doesn't wind up going uh, from foreign entities like the, into exactly. the AFL-CIO doesn't go to fund Democratic ads? How do we know anything? You know, how do we know uh, anything? I, like, you, can you really just throw it out there like, hmm, it could be, hey, so now you need to spend hey, Megan, all your time and money de de defending my hmm, could be accusation. Go ahead, Lars. Megan, I'm not kissing anything either, just like Leslie. But I'll tell you this, Leslie should pay attention that half of the AFL-CIO is made up of foreign unions. You could say that half of, half of their contributions to American political campaigns, therefore, must be foreign money. All these organizations know how to segregate those funds. And they, he's made this false well, charge, the and then he backs it. off on it. The law requires it, which yeah, is really the bottom line. Absolutely, the law requires it. You raise an but interesting issue, thing. though, about oh. the lawsuit, Leslie, because i got to tell you, I was thinking about doing this on Kelly's court tomorrow to see whether there is a lawsuit, <laughs> and now you have cemented the idea I am doing that tomorrow on Kelly's Good. court. Leslie and Lars, thanks so much. <laughs>